Thank you for joining me tonight for Good Friday worship. It's obvious that I'm not leading worship tonight from the place that I usually do. I said a little bit about this last night during the Monday Thursday service, but for those who are joining us for the first time, we made the decision to have our worship services as the stay at home order seemed to be getting more and more serious, to do all of our worship pieces remotely and then bring them together for what we pray will be a seamless experience and it will be the safest way to keep all of us, including me and all of your worship leaders, as safe as possible during this difficult time. So thank you again for being here as we think about another extremely difficult time in the life of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When he made the decision to give up his life on the cross, no one took it from him but he gave it up willingly. And that is what we remember and we reflect on tonight. We'll be reading several different scripture lessons throughout our service. And as each one is read, we will extinguish a candle. These candles represent followers of Christ, his disciples, and us as disciples. And then, of course, the candle to my right is the Christ candle. This is the actual Christ candle from our sanctuary. I'm so grateful to be able to have that piece of that place here with us tonight. You'll be hearing from people other than me reading the scripture lessons in their home as you are in your home tonight. So I hope that that will make this experience feel that much more personal as we worship our God. I invite you to join me in our call to worship. The words will be on the screen you will respond in the bold type. Slowly, we come to worship on this Holy Friday. Reluctantly, we hear the story of Jesus' suffering. Bleakly, we follow Jesus to the cross. Humbly, we acknowledge our part in his passion. Deeply, we yearn to understand the depth of this sacrifice. Solemnly, we pray and worship together tonight, giving thanks for our Savior, Jesus Christ. And now... Let us continue to reflect on the love of Jesus through this act of sacrifice and care by hearing the music of what wondrous love is this.
let us join together in praying the prayer of confession aloud. You'll find the words on the screen. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way. We have sinned and have been the cause of Christ's suffering. Please forgive us, we pray. Remove the sins that distance us from you and from those we love and care about. Remove our selfishness, our pride, our envy, and our greed. Remove from us our thoughtless acts and words that hurt one another. Remove from us the tendency to hurt others out of revenge and anger. Forgive us, please. Create in us a clean heart, O Lord, and renew in us a right spirit. Amen. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees. And they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again, he asked them, whom are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me?
So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? And again Peter denied it. And at that moment, the cock crowed.
distance from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. The Jews replied, We are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked, So are you a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Pilate asked him, What is truth? After he said this, he went out to the Jews again and told him, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you on the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, king of the Jews, and striking him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. The Jews answered him, We have a law. And according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? Jesus answered him, You would have no power over me unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate re tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabagatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. He said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Crucify him! Pilate said, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but the emperor. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified.
So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city and was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but this man said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. I am a poor wayfaring stranger, a traveling through this world of war, where there's no sickness, toil, or danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going home to see my mother. She said she'd meet me when I come. I'm just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over. traveling through this world of war, where there's no sickness, toil, or danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going home to see my father. He said he'd meet me when I come. I'm just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over home. I am a poor wayfaring stranger. Are traveling through this world of war, where there's no sickness, toil, or danger in that bright land to which I go. I'm going there to see my Savior. I'm going there no more. Just a going over Jordan. I'm just a going over. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes among themselves. And for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene.
Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that it was now finished, he said, in order to fulfill the scripture, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there. So they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, though a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate gave him permission, so he came and removed his body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred pounds. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices and linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there.
It is finished in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.